Hi, I'm Sai from Cosmic Bikes and this is the full nerd bike check on my Rocket Max Gen 4 prototype that I just raced the EWS 100 at Tweed Valley this weekend. This bike is based around the prototype that we used for developing the Rocket Max Gen 4 that we've just released. One of the things we introduced with the Gen 4 was a new sizing uh, regime. We've now got five size steps instead of four, um, and some of the sizes have been rejigged, one of them being the largest size, um, which is what I, I ride, which we call C5 now. Um, and having established long shot geometry a few years ago, um, I felt like it was time to uh, go back and see where, where the boundaries could be pushed or whether anything could be changed or improved uh, on that side of things. Um, since 2018 the Rocket Max has had a 63 and a half degree head angle so it's pretty out there anyway um, but it's perfect for its intended purpose which is going fast over rough ground. You'll probably notice on this bike it's got a very big head tube um, which allows me to use reach adjust headsets from uh, works components. Um, so there's this is currently the 520 reach, which is what we now established as the new C5 size, which is up 5 mil from the old XL. Um, I did actually have it all the way out at 530. Um, I did at one point have 180 mil forks on it, taking it all the way out to like the head angle into the 62s. Um, so I've tried a whole bunch of stuff, um, but came back to what I wanted for this bike being 174, 160 rear, 63 and a half degree head angle and just that slight tweak on the reach um, so it's still comfortable with the steeper seat angle that we've got on this bike. A few more details you might notice on this frame which are a little less flattering is the pretty shonky paint finish. Um, we tried a different supplier for some powder coating and we always try and sort of kill two birds with one stone when we're prototyping. Um, so uh, unfortunately the uh, the prep wasn't quite the best so I've got flaky paint on my bike but uh, you know one of the less glamorous sides of prototyping uh, new bikes. Um, I guess the only other things the eagle eyed might spot is I've still got the um, the previous generation gussets down here instead of the brace tube we ended up with. Um, those gussets have generally been completely fine in ride testing but they actually popped during lab, lab testing um, which is why we went round the loop again and we've got that um, we've got that tube uh, brace in the bottom triangle now just to uh, really get the frame you know super robust um, for longer life um, so parts um, I guess starting at the top um, I run these grips which are from uh, a Finnish company that we actually sourced through lockdown um, and it was simply just to get some grips to get something but I actually really like them they're kind of really soft rubber um, and they sort of move a little bit and they're, they're just yeah I just really like them um, in the past I've used those uh, WTB padlock grips where you have to cut your bars because I roll my hands over the end of the bars a lot uh, you can probably see by the grip pattern but which I, and I do really like those but they don't make them anymore so um, that's a bit of a shame uh, moving on to the controls I run SRAM guide RSC uh, G2 brakes, four pot brakes. Um, I really like the lever feel. Um, I don't get on with Shimano lever feel with the weight weights a bit all or nothing. These are a bit more uh, modulated and I like the really long levers. Um, I also run a uh, SRAM Axis uh, drivetrain. I've got an Axis XX1 system with a matchmaker. I've got the uh, hop up paddle. Um, which makes the gear shifting a little bit more intuitive. I run a one-up seat post with a 180 mil drop, um, which has been brilliant. It's been on my bike a fairly long time. I've done one service kit on it, but it's been it's been absolutely good as gold. Bars are new proof Sam Hill edition. Um, they're basically identical shape to the Kotic bars, but they're, they're available in a 38 mil rise, whereas the uh, Kotic bars are 25 mil. Um, so I really like that slightly more back sweep than, than the Renthols, than some of the other bars on the market. Um, and yeah, these just suit me and I like the higher rise. It makes me stand a bit taller on the bike, uh, keeps my weight centered. Um, you know, I'm a pretty tall guy and pretty big bike. So yeah, that just helps me get into a good position. Um, I run my bars cut to 770 across the ends of the grips, which is actually about 760 on the bars themselves. 
Um, I run a Kotick 35mm stem and I've got one 10mm spacer under my stem um, on, the, uh, on the stack. Right, moving down, um, I am running model year 22 Lyrics at 170mm travel. Um, I did develop the bike uh, for Zebs, and uh, that's what that's one of the that's one of the fork options that you can uh, that you can get on the bike as the new model year 23 lyrics and maximum 160. Um, I actually sort of ended up preferring the feel of the lyrics, um, and the other thing, uh, and the Zebs went on my e-bike as well because we've been developing the e-bike prototype, and the Zebs are absolutely fabulous on that. Um, so yeah, there was a few little decisions going on there. Um, I actually have um, an NSR racing damper in these, which is spectacularly good. Um, yeah, cannot recommend it enough. It's next level, supple, accurate. Um, I'm 90 kilos in my riding kit and I run no tokens in the air spring and I run 85 and a half PSI in the fork. Moving back from the forks uh, to standard Kotick saddle, um, saddles are very personal, so you may or may not like them. Uh, I do. Uh, this is about four years old. It's been across a bunch of different bikes and it's still going strong. It's even got our old logo on it just to prove it. Um, moving down a little bit further, we've got my water bottle with my little uh, O-ring ejection uh, rejection device. Um, I generally ride with a pack and I rode with a pack this weekend because I carried a lot of water with me. Um, what that was for was carrying electrolytes so that I stayed properly hydrated and didn't start seeing weird things when I was uh, six hours into a big day. Um, but it worked perfectly, bottle was secure, didn't come off, um, happy days. Moving down again, rear shock is a Cane Creek Kitsuma coil. Um, the coil compatibility is back for this generation of Rocket Max, so I've spent quite a lot of time getting the coil shock option dialed in. Um, super happy with it. Um, like I said, I'm 90 kilos in my riding kit. I'm running a 500 pound volt spring uh, with about half a turn of preload on it, just barely enough to stop it rattling. That gives me 30% um, sag on the, on the, um, on the shock. Um, I run from open uh, one click low speed rebound, five clicks low speed compression, uh, one full turn of high speed compression and a quarter turn of high speed rebound. Um, I generally run my rebound relatively quick um, to keep the bike up um, and on this shock because there's no, um, you know, because it's not an air shock and there's no stiction or any kind of um, thing to manage with the shape of the air spring curve um, I run uh, quite a bit more low speed compression than I would do on the Kitsuma Air Shock just to give me that support to drive through supported turns. Um, it's super supple and um, yeah, it's a real good match to the fork and it was absolutely dialed at the weekend. It was, it was so good. I was really, really happy with the bike. Um, staying in the middle but moving down a little bit further, we've got my beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous Cane Creek E-Wing Titanium Cranks. Um, they are ridiculous. They're light and stiff and enormously expensive and very shiny and you'll prize them out of my cold dead fingers. They are about four years old and I absolutely love them and if you have the means I highly recommend picking some up. Wheels are Hunt Trail Wide 29 version 2. I've been running these for about eight months now. Um, I'll be honest, with them moving to the 28 hole construction on this generation, I was a little bit concerned about the stiffness, but they've been absolutely spot on. Um, I run a WTB Verdict with light slash guard casing uh, at the front, high grip. That's just my go-to all round tire. I absolutely love it, just works for me, um, suits my riding style. Um, I'm not a particular wheel smasher, so um, I don't have any um, inserts or anything like that. Um, at the rear I'm running a Maxxis DHR2 um, in the XO Plus casing with the 3C Max Terra. Yeah, Max Terra, not Max Grip. Um, it's the 2.4. Um, I did run a double down for a bit just because that was all I could get, but um, which was fine and it did have quite nice feel. Um, but I just went for the slightly lighter casing when I could get it because uh, again, like I say, I'm not a particular wheel wrecker. Um, and it just helped on the climbs, just not having the extra weight. Um, 
I run 19 PSI in the front, I run 22 PSI in the rear, um, and that's it for the wheels. So broadly my drivetrain is SRAM based, um, although uh, there's some of the bits aren't SRAM, obviously there's the cranks. Um, the cassette is actually a Garbarrett cassette, which is uh, on an XD driver, but it's a 10 and still 1052. Um, I tried it out because I wanted to see whether we had an option when cassette availability was a bit patchy. Um, it's worked brilliantly. Um, the shifting's maybe not quite as slick as a SRAM or Shimano cassette, but it's it's perfectly good. Um, the big advantage of this for me is that the second gear is 44 instead of 42 on the SRAM cassettes, uh, which gives you a slightly more even jump um, at the uh, at the easier end of the cassette, which I've really enjoyed. Um, I run a 32 tooth SRAM SRAM chainring, and I had no issues at all. Uh, the climbs at, at the Golfie are fairly steady. Um, we went full party pace and 32.52 was more than happy um, and I never got close to getting into top gear. To be quite honest, if you're going, if you're spinning out at 32.10 off-road, it's pretty hectic. So really happy with the gear range. Um, it's a Kotick integrated chain guide. I've got a Unite bash plate, which is a little bit bent from techie grounding out around here and switch into the other side of the bike. Um, the other end of the brakes are still SRAM G2s, but I run Galfa rotors and Galfa e-bike purple pads, which are a real step from the SRAM stuff. Um, I do like the SRAM power organic pads. They've got real nice feel, but um, these Galfa rotors and, and pads are, are pretty amazing. So uh, yeah, they're a highly recommended piece of kit. Um, Anything else is, I run flat pedals as you could probably see. Um, I was a big fan of DMR Volts for a long, long time and I still am. Uh, I still got them on one of my other bikes. Um, but I wanted to try something a bit different and uh, I like the idea of these uh, one-ups because they've got the big bearing in the inside and I pedal with my feet real wide so having that, having this here is not too much of a problem for me. Um, they're super thin, they've been really robust, they've got real nice feel. Um, and in combination with my Bontrager shoes at the weekend, I didn't have any trouble with my feet, you know, getting sore even on the long stages, which was unusual um, for me. Uh, so yeah, really happy with that setup. On a more aesthetic point of view, um, the, de the down tube decal is just a test thing that we're having a go with. Doesn't quite work, but obviously again, prototyping, you get all the test stickers and ratty paint jobs and all of that, less glamorous side of things. Um, all of the little number stickers are for the WS race because once you start the race you are time penalised if you end up breaking something and swapping a part of your frame or fork or, t or wheels. Um, so all of those stickers are kind of anti-tamper so once they've gone on on Saturday morning they can't come off until the end of the race otherwise you get a time penalty. Um, the only other little cosmetic bits is that uh, I switched to the production linkage and shock mount uh, a couple of months ago because they've got the new rounded edges and they just tidy it up and look a little bit nicer compared to the raw finish items I did have on it. Um, but that's me. That is my Rocket Max Gen 4 prototype. So that was the bike check on my Kotick Rocket Max Gen 4 prototype. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any questions about the bike or any, any specifics you think I've missed, uh, drop the question in the comments, drop me an email or send us a DM and I'll reply as best I can. Um, thanks for watching.